That, that was our cue to come up. So um, Lisa, Lisa's with her mother this morning, so I asked Jerusha to read voice A for the candlelight liturgy. I will wait in line at the BMV. I will wait for the right moment. I will wait for the fire to grow. I will wait for the last dance. I will wait for the light to turn green. I will wait for the kids to come home. I will wait for the paint to dry. I will wait for the right words to say. I will wait for Christmas to arrive. I will wait for a lot of things, but I will not wait for an opportunity to share love. The world needs love. So today we light the candle of love to remind us to spread our love wherever we go. May we be courageous enough to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Thanks, Jerusha. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to those of you who are here and those of you who are joining us at home online. Uh, I invite you to join in the call to worship. We are seeking a place to belong, 
the feeling that God is here in the room. We are seeking joy that overflows, the movement of the Spirit, hand to hold when alone in the dark. We are seeking the freedom to be, the courage to love, the conviction to act in the face of injustice. We are seeking, but here in this space, we are found. Take a deep breath. This is your sanctuary. God is here. We are found. Amen. One of the greatest gifts and challenges of faith is that we are we cannot be Christian alone. We need one another. We need one another to grow. We need one another to love. We need one another to see God more clearly. So together, let us lift our voices in unison. Let us lean into the ties that bind and pray to our mercy of God. God of today and tomorrow, who Mary was pregnant and afraid. She's to her cousin Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth who opened the door with joy and showered blessings upon her. How often do we have that same opportunity? How often do we leave the door locked, the curtains drawn, the lights off? How often do we shower critique or judgment instead of blessings and joy? Gracious God, forgive us for our wrongs, we want to see you when we see our neighbor. Amen. Friends, this is what I know. God delights in us. God throws open the door, just like Elizabeth, and says, come on home. This is, there is room for you here. And in that moment, we are blessed. In that moment, we are forgiven. In that moment, we are seen, healed, and welcomed home. Rest in this good news. You are saved by grace. Let us respond together using the words from Mary's song. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Oh. 
Take a moment to turn around and say good morning to someone worshiping nearby. Good morning to all of our friends online. We're so glad you're here worshiping with us. If you haven't commented yet in the chat to let us know you're here, please do so. Give thanks to God for your presence. For those of you in the room today, if you have not yet filled out the yellow slip, I invite you to do so and put that in the offering plate when it goes by later. A reminder also, if you have a prayer request today, the orange slip in the basket is how you can do that in the room. And for those of you on online, just please comment in the chat and we will bring those prayer requests to God today. I see some of you are wearing your name tags. You can see I'm wearing mine. Um, if you have not yet found yours, um, I believe they're on the table right out here in the, in the walkway as you come to the sanctuary or to the fellowship hall. So please be sure to, to grab that. Another way you can help First Pres be a uh, place of welcome, in addition to your name tag, is to make sure that we have an updated photo of you in First Web. Um, that's our secure online directory. And today, uh, I will be taking photos and Carrie will be helping me. Um, so there's a little space there in the lobby where it's got good lighting. So if you'll just join me over there at some point after worship today or um, after 1030 worship today, I'll take your picture. This is especially to help Reverend Anna Von Winkler as she begins her ministry with us. Um, so thank you for helping us do that. And in the spirit of, doing, of preparing for Reverend Anna Von Winkler, I would like to ask you to let me take a photo today. So if I can get everybody just to look towards me and like wave, I'm gonna take a photo of the congregation. I'll also come and get the band and we're gonna use those as a welcome for Reverend Anna. So everybody just hold them on it. All in one shot. I can get close, maybe. Hold on, hold on. Everybody, yes, and wave. Everybody, wave. Wave. Keep waving. I'm gonna go get the pen. Merry and Bright does not describe everyone's mood during the holidays, and it's been a particularly rough one for us here in this congregation and for so many of you um, with your own families. So we invite you to join us on Wednesday, December 21st at 7 p.m. We will have a service um, commemorating the longest night and um, taking a moment to, through music, scripture, readings, and prayer to find comfort in Christ's peace. So please join us. We will be streaming that as well. So if you can't come in person, we invite you to join us online. It is very hard for me to believe that this weekend is Christmas. So on Saturday at 5 p.m., we will have our annual Christmas Eve service um, with carols, candlelight, and communion. Bring your family, your friends, and coworkers to this very special worship. There will be childcare, and you do not have to have a reservation. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing all of you there and, and ushering in the Christ child on Saturday evening. Please be sure to check the announcements in your bulletin for other First Pres happenings. And let's continue our worship of God. Let us pray. God of all, we are often distracted and forlorn, eager, and anxious. Break down the barriers we place around our hearts and douse us in good news. We need to know that we are not alone and that you are always near. Knock on our door, then come right in. Make yourself at home. Pull us close and tell us your story of unbelievable good news. We are listening. We are grateful. Amen. 
Today's lesson from the Hebrew Scriptures comes from Isaiah 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear them, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before those two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning with verse 39. Listen for God's word. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb, in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The word of the Lord. Before John and I were approached by Susan McGee to be co-bridge pastors here, we were being trained at Bloomington First Presbyterian Church to assist immigrants coming from different countries, acclimate into the Bloomington community and life in the United States. Families with children of all ages were and are arriving at the Indianapolis airport, often with nothing but the clothes on their back. The team works with an organization to find an apartment for the family, obtain necessary legal papers, and begin looking for jobs for those who are able to work. When we received word that a family would be arriving, part of the team would begin outfitting the apartment with the appropriate number of beds, the basic furniture that they would need, while others gathered linens, dishes, pots and pans, silverware, toilet paper, soap, toothbrushes, cleaning supplies, and other necessities for daily living. Clothes were also needed because most of the families only remained connected to families for several weeks while others several months, whatever the family needed. The goal is to welcome the families, to get them set up in a place to live, connect them with the needed resources, 
get them employment, enroll the children in school so that they can be self-sufficient and acclimated to this new community and new country. Christine Hong, whose own parents were Korean immigrants, told that her mother said, whoever met you at the airport determined the direction your life moved. She writes, I remember my mother's words and reflect on them whenever I reach significant impasses in my life, a new job, a move, and when I became a parent for the first time. Each significant milestone feels like a threshold. When I prepare to cross these thresholds, I look for the people and communities waiting on the other side, the people and communities who will anchor me and hold me in the nebulous space of change, uncertainty, and even fear. We read today in the scriptures Mary entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. The Greek word for house means the structure, the building, but it also encompasses the relationships of the family that is the basis for that structure, such as the house of David or the house of Windsor. Mary entered the house in a Judean town in the hill country it was probably a home made of stone, a little house built on top of and among a lot of other little houses with small courtyards and steep alleyways winding up and down the hill. It probably had a central room with a hive-shaped oven where pruned olive branches were burning and fragrant. A pile of dried dung was there for the cooking fire. The rooms were dark and small with high windows for ventilation. A big jug of water stood by the door that someone filled early that morning to be used carefully all day long, nothing wasted. But it wasn't the house that Mary was seeking when she was in need. Somehow she knew, or she hoped, that this was a place where she would be welcomed. Every Sunday, people walk through the doors of a church, this church, because they hope they will be welcomed. We who have been around the church a long time know that we are here to welcome others. But sometimes we get so busy enjoying and welcoming the ones we know and who are familiar, that we forget to welcome those who are strangers or who are new to us. It takes initiative and intent to bring new people in, to make them feel welcomed. A newly retired pastor talked about using his Sunday freedom from preaching responsibilities to visit churches in, in the, his area. He and his wife visited over 15 churches. They knew how to dress and how to act. But in church after church after church, almost everyone ignored them. There was no welcome. I can't help but wondering what would it have been like if they had looked different or acted different than the people they were visiting. Mary was in need. People don't just walk up to a place of hospitality, to a church, for no reason at all. They go because they have a need. We don't know Mary's need exactly. We know that she's had a life-changing encounter with an angel. We can imagine that she was perplexed, overwhelmed, possibly frightened or anxious, lonely, and hopeful to find welcome there at her cousin's house. I imagine that I would have all of these feelings and even more if I had encountered the mystery of God. 
We do know that it causes her to hurry to this house in the Judean hill country. The word house also means to go in, to spend the night, to find safety from the dangers of the dark. It would not be too much of a stretch to assume that Mary needed shelter from a friend, that she needed blessing that family can offer. There's an Irish proverb that says, it is in the shelter of each other that the people live. It is in the shelter of each other that the people live. To make a place hospitable, we must first make room in our own hearts. It is the practice day by day by day of love and generosity that makes our hearts spacious enough to have places of welcoming. This is hospitality, the work, the joy of God. Wise woman Benedictine Joan Chichester says, hospitality is the first step toward dismantling the barriers of the world. It is the way we turn a prejudiced world around one heart at a time. Hospitality binds the world together. Elizabeth could have been judgmental. That would have been understandable. Mary was engaged, but not married, and pregnant. Societal norms would have her go someplace away where no one knew her to wait for the baby, and then she would probably have been shunned or isolated. Instead, Mary is met by her cousin who greets her with welcome, anticipation, and a powerful blessing. So rich was the blessing that the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped up to greet Mary and the baby in Mary's womb. Any fear Mary had was met with the contagious courage of Elizabeth, courage enough for both of them. And the, through their spiritual and relational partnership, Mary and Elizabeth framed the path of partnership for their children as well. Mary greets Elizabeth at a literal threshold, the doorway of, the, of Elizabeth's home, and goes to her at a threshold moment in her life when all is about to change. We all face multiple thresholds moments in our lives. When we begin school for the first time, when we move from elementary to middle school and then from middle school up to high school, when we graduate and head away to college or to a training program or into the workforce, we cross another threshold. Then there are breakups, a move to a new town, the potential for marriage, possible children, changes of employment, divorce, death. These are all thresholds in our lives that we need to cross. A large part of growing up, of becoming an adult, is learning to manage and cope with the feelings that we have as we go through each of these thresholds. Even the exciting thresholds, the ones like marriage or a new job or a first job, involve anxiety and some stress because they involve something new and different. To call a threshold in your own life, who were the people who greeted you and supported you through that transition? How did they do that? What was your strength, your comfort? 
I have heard time and time again from people, I don't like change. The reality is that most people don't. There is comfort in the familiar, the usual, the traditional, the known. There is a part of being human that wants to know the future, whether it's the weather, the stock market, which cars are the most reliable, how the elections will turn out, the end of the story. We want to know what we can count on. The reality is we can count on change happening. It just does. Change, as we all know, is inevitable. We experience the changing of the seasons, and I believe we are able to find some blessing or something to enjoy in each of those seasons. Naturally, we have preferences as to which seasons we prefer, depending on whether we choose to garden or we would like to build a snowman or make a snow angel. Thomas Long of Candler University wrote in the Advent devotional, A Surprising God, our motives reflect a deep hunger to protect ourselves from the unknown, to exert ultimate control over life, to eliminate all unpredictability and surprise. But the living God seen in the Bible is a God full of surprises. One who since Eden has frustrated all human efforts to eliminate predictability. Do not remember the former things, God says. I am about to do a new thing. Who would have predicted a burning bush or the parting of the Red Sea. This surprising God is at the heart of Advent. God didn't come as a mighty warrior or a powerful king. God keeps adventing into our lives in ways that continue to amaze. God came as a tiny baby in a lowly stable and the announcement of that birth was heavens filled with angels. Pretty surprising, I'd say. God is the only one that we can count on in the midst of all the changes in our lives. God's love remains steadfast throughout the ages. We saw that as we celebrated the 200th anniversary of this congregation, the ways that God continued to provide all that was needed throughout that 200 years, taking care of this congregation. And God, by way of the Holy Spirit, will give us the strength, the courage, the comfort, and the assurance to walk through all the thresholds of our lives. When faced with a threshold, we can look forward for those who will offer us hospitality, welcome, and blessing. All that we need will be there. God will provide. This congregation is facing yet another threshold. As John and I leave, and Reverend Anna Von Winkler has been led here to this congregation to take you and lead you through this threshold and up to the next one when you will be searching for a permanent pastor. You can draw comfort from knowing that God 
has and will provide all that you need in many surprising ways. You have seen God's faithfulness in providing all that you need. May you welcome and embrace Anna with all the warmth and the love and the joy that Elizabeth showed her cousin on that threshold, on that doorstep of her home. Amen. Please join me by saying what we believe in the affirmation of faith as printed. We believe that creation is inextricably linked. We belong to one another in an undeniable way. We are bone of bone and flesh of flesh, life breathed into dust. We believe that God invites us to live into that truth, 
to love without abandon, to see the good in one another, to trust that all belong to God. We know that this life of connection is easier said than done, which is why we gather in this space week after week, generation after generation, to see God in each other, which we believe. Amen. We will receive the Christmas joy offering today, supporting current and retired church workers in need, as well as Presbyterian schools and colleges. You may use the envelope in your bulletin to contribute. Elizabeth offers her home. She offers her arms. She offers her joy. She offers her affirmation and confidence. Elizabeth offers everything she has with goes up at her door, and it is part of our call as people of faith is to give when and where we can. Today, we are invited to be a little more like Elizabeth. Today, we are invited to give generously, trusting that God will take these gifts and build a better world. Let us give with joyful hearts. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for the generous way you love us. May these gifts, along with the gift of our very selves, bring healing and comfort to your world. Amen. Please be in prayer this week for um, those with whom we, for whom we are concerned, and um, they are these for Mary and Lisa, for being treated for cancer and for their families, for Leslie, who is, and all those who are um, dealing with struggling with mental health issues. For all struggling with dementia and those who care for them. For Martha Bose, who is, who is having health challenges. For Becky Sparks Thyssen and Lynn and their family at the sudden death of Michael. Prayers for Karen Daniels as she recovers from heart surgery. And she actually, she is doing quite well, according to uh, uh, her daughter, Lisa. For all who are grieving this holiday season, 
for our friends and members who live alone or in residential facilities. Um, for Walt and Judy, Walt was admitted to a memory care unit um, and Judy is dealing with a pinched nerve and is in great pain. Uh, we remember those who have joined the church triumphant, Bob Hurt, Lou Young, Warren Brown, Marie Lynn, Carl Swain Jr., and Janet Robinson. May their memory be a blessing. All these we lift to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of yesterday and God of tomorrow, from the, very, from the very beginning, you gave us the gift of relationships. You tucked us into communities. From the very beginning, you wired us for connection. You made our hearts capable of love. We thank you. This gift of relationship has led us to people who lead us to you, and we are better for it. So today we want to say thank you for our Elizabeth, for the people who have been thrown open, who have thrown open the doors for us, who revel in our joy, who point out our your presence in our lives, and who are quick to affirm us and call us blessed. Those people come in many shapes and sizes. For some of us, the Elizabeths in our lives are family members, brothers and sisters, parents, grandparents, who have cheered us on along the way. For others, it is teachers and counselors, neighbors and church members, uh, closest friends and confidants come to mind. We can't forget the way our chosen family, spouses and partners have been like Elizabeths for us. These people have reminded us that love looks like what love looks like in a hurting world, which has pointed us back to you. So today, God, we ask for your help in opening our eyes even more. We want to see you in those who love us as well as those who don't. We want to see you in those we see every day and in those we've never talked to. We want to see you not only in those who are family, who look like us or think like us, but in those who come from every, from very different places and positions in life. From generation to generation, you have left your fingerprints all over creation. Help us to be like Elizabeth, to see and celebrate glimmers of your good news in, the, in all that we see and do in the world. With hope, we pray the prayer our Lord taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
to be with us in every age, through every threshold we face. Spread the word to those who live without hope. Live this word that the people may know God with us, Emmanuel. And now let the face of God shine upon you, that you may be blessed and that you may be a blessing in the world.